If you've listened to us for a little while, we know that you know that we talk never endingly about the powerful law of attraction and how it is the manager of all things. And we talk to you about managing your thoughts by paying attention to the way you feel and blah, blah, blah. You've heard all of it. You know that. We know that you understand and know that. And recently we've been describing to you with a little more emphasis that you are often, if you are like most humans, giving your attention to what is manifesting around you and therefore that's what you're calibrating to. In other words, the vibrational output that you are generating is happening because of what you are observing. That's normal, not altogether helpful for you, but understandable, certainly. And in that sense, normal, certainly. So as you are observing what's happening around you in, in any point in time, by your attention to that, you are offering a vibration which is you calibrating to that and you therefore establishing a stronger point of attraction and the law of attraction is responding to what your vibrational output is but we really want you to remember that while that's happening with you from your human perspective from your thoughts that you are thinking that there is another part of you, a much larger part of you, who is at this same moment, in this same time, in this now, in this universal now where non-physical and physical um, co-create or conspire. That non-physical part of you is also offering a vibration. Now, that vibration is exciting for us to talk about because that is the vibration. That's really the whole of who you are. That's really the present tense of who you are. Because as you are in your physical form, when you know what you don't want, you are launching a rocket of desire about what you do want. And that vibrational emission is transmitted from you and received by your inner being. And your vibrational reality is expanding. We call that your vortex. We want so much for you to accept it as something that is real and something that is now, especially since it's where your inner being is. Your inner being standing there as the never ending, always in the moment culmination of all that your life is causing you to be. So that vibrational reality is vivid, but the most important thing that we are wanting to say about that right now is that that is your most powerful point of attraction. Knowing what you don't want may be what you and your human thoughts are thinking most about. But this vibrational reality that you have been and are generating, that's really what is most powerfully being responded to. We have said over time that that point of attraction is millions of times more powerful than what you are giving your thoughts to right here, right now. And that's why we can always say to you, with absolute certainty that the well-being is dominant and will always prevail. But there is a question about how much you torture yourself in any given moment in time as you focus upon a now reality rather than focusing toward the solution reality. You cannot focus upon a problem and a solution at the same time, but we are not asking you to do that. You came knowing that you would focus upon what's happening around you, knowing that by knowing what you don't want, that there would be a culminating within you, a vibrational launching of clarity of what you do want. And you knew it was a good idea. You did not say, I'll go forth and be surrounded only by things that please me in every moment. And therefore my vibrational offering will be easy because it will just be a knee jerk reaction to what I'm observing. You said, I'll go forth into this new environment, into this new environment, into this always new environment, physical environment, ever-changing environment. And as I focus there, I will continuously, steadily launch rockets of desire. And those rockets of desire will really represent who I am. You knew that before your birth into this physical body. And so we want to remind you that that is really what's going on. This vortex version of you, this non-physical version of you, this 
preceding version of you, this getting ready to be ready to be ready to manifest version of you. This is pure positive energy and your inner being is focused there. Source energy is focused there. There isn't anything, not a situation, a condition, uh, a relationship, a pile of money, an empire. There is nothing that you desire for any other reason than you think you will feel better in the having of it. And what you have an opportunity to come to know is that you don't have to have it in order to feel it, but by feeling it and feeling better, now you are closing the gap between where you are and where you want to be. And you will see day-to-day -day evidence of that right around you. There is so much around you in your immediate vicinity that will yield to you improvement. But here's the thing. Sounds a little bit like a contradiction. We don't want you to need or look for that improvement. Not right now. Because in your need or in your premature looking for it, rather than in the way you feel, then you redirect your focus and... It's not like stepping back and it's not like being held back, but it does, it does perpetuate a momentum other than the momentum that you really want to perpetuate. So what is the momentum that you really want to perpetuate? Well, we've been telling you this story for a while that you are an extension of source energy and you came into this physical body. And as you are observing, just naturally observing, your life around you, the people around you, the situations around you, the nature around you, the environment around you. Through that exposure to this magnificent leading edge time and space, you are automatically doing the step one that you knew you would do when you decided to come into this environment, this physical environment, into this body and create. You knew that the environment would activate within you clarity of wanted and unwanted. You knew it would help you to focus and you knew it would be the reason that you would launch rockets of desires. So we call that step one, it's the asking. Life causes you to ask, it just does. You don't have to work hard at it. You are globally asking like never before. It is a magnificent thing to behold. So you are asking, now step two, that's where non-physical comes in. That's what the vortex is about. That's what the vibrational reality is about. And that's what law of attraction responding to that point of focus, which is the non-physical you is about. And it makes us say in pointed words, when you ask, it is given. When you ask, it is given. Now, some complain, well then where is it? And we say, it's given, it's a vibrational reality, and you say, big deal, I don't want a vibrational reality. I want a reality I can see and hear and smell and taste and touch. And we say, we know you do, but you also want a reality that you can feel. And this is your opportunity beyond ever before to feel this reality, this vortexual vibrational reality. You can feel it if you want to. You can feel it if you'll let yourself because it's broadcasting to you in a louder, stronger, more persistent, momentous wave than ever before. So that's step three. That's when you are receiving that. That's when you feel clarity. You feel an idea. You get an idea that would help right now. You get an idea that thrills you when you think about it. You get an idea that rings your bells and, and, and makes you buzz a little bit. You feel, and it might just be an idea, hear us and understand us, about cleaning out a drawer. It might be that idea. Doesn't matter how grand you think it is or how insignificant you think it is. When the idea comes, from source energy because you are no longer offering resistance. You're in the receiving mode. We, we like to explain that the receiving mode is like a cork bobbing on the surface of the water. Let's call that receiving mode. Tuned in, tapped in, turned on. Now you can hold that cork under the water with worrisome thoughts or focused upon things that cause you to feel uncomfortable. But when you let go of it, it's going to bob back up. And that's what you're like. You bob back up if you will just let yourself. In other words, if you're not focused upon worrisome thoughts, and we know this is the last uh, 
a moment in time where you really want to hear that because there are a lot of worrisome thoughts that are sort of being uh, atmospheres around you. Nobody's asserting them into your experience, but they're available for you to tune into. So when you aren't thinking that thought that causes you to feel bad, then your cork flows. You get into the receptive mode. And that's step three, receiving. That's where impulses come from. That's where thriving comes from. That's where your replenishment comes from. That's where your cells of your body are nude, nourished. In other words, it's, it's a replenishing mode, replenishing of thoughts, replenishing of point of attraction, replenishment on all levels. It's the receptive mode. It's the receiving mode. It's pure positive energy. And it's, it's raining down all around you. You just have to let yourself open to it. Let yourself open to it and feel it. We are sitting in a room with a tin roof and the rain just began to rain down, emphasizing that well-being is raining down all around you. In other words, an instant manifestation that demonstrates to you that the majority of what's going on on this planet is still well-being raining down around you. And your cork can float if you will just let it. Now, how do you go about letting your cork float? Some want to take hold of it and just goose it up a little bit. That's not a good idea. We don't want you to try to force anything. Just try to relax a little more. Try to think more positive things about more things. In other words, look for reasons to feel good right where you are. And of course, the easiest way for your cork to really float, for you to really accomplish the receptive mode, the easiest way for you to do that is by quieting your mind altogether. Quieting your mind is not a difficult thing. It's a focus thing. It's a focusing on things not interesting or focusing on things with not much momentum. In other words, if you do it earlier in the day, it's easier for you to quiet your mind. If you wait until your mind is already activated around many other things, it will be less easy for you. Esther has explained to people she visits with about meditation that sometimes it takes her four or five or six or seven or eight or nine or ten attempts at refocusing into quiet because there are already thoughts that have some momentum going and they are attracting her. That's what the point of attraction is accomplishing. What you will begin to accomplish is more time in vibrational alignment with the broader part of you, which means more time in vibrational alignment with the desires that you've been projecting or launching into your vortex. In other words, you're tuned in, tapped in, turned on, and thoughts are going to begin to flow to you. Better said, you're going to begin to receive the revealing of these thoughts. The revelation of these thoughts has been going on for a long time with you. But you are going to be tuned with your floating cork to the frequency of these thoughts, and you're going to feel it, and you're going to know it, and you won't be wondering about it. And the reason you won't be wondering about it is because, especially now, in your now manifested reality, where you are launching stronger desires than ever before, there is a greater gap between where most people are and where their inner being is, and you're going to feel the tuning process happen within you. You're going to know it.